polyphonic waveform detection, analyzing, and audio editing is fast becoming an industry standard. What I want to do in this video is really just show you simply what polyphonic detection is and how it works here in Melodyne 4. A company that's really pioneered this technology is Celimony throughout the years. And in this version, we're using Melodyne 4. Now, what we're going to do is I'll import a piano. I'm going to click and drag here my file browser and bring it into the track header like so. Melodyne's going to analyze it. And it already understands that it's polyphonic. Now, what that means is it's a complex waveform. In other words, there's multiple notes being performed at the same time like a guitar would, or in this case, a piano. If it was monophonic, like a solo vocal performance, then it would be one consecutive string of notes at a time. Now that it's detected it, here, I'll select focus, and there we have our piano. What we're looking at here is a more musical perspective of what we're sonically hearing, in this case, a piano performance. Now, how does Melodyne do this? Well, it's really simple. First, it has to understand what kind of audio it is. And for that, up here under algorithm, you've got different kinds of presets, universal, percussive for percussive elements, melodic would be, again, a monophonic take like a bass guitar or a solo vocal performance. Then there's polyphonic sustain, which is able to look into audio and plot it out like it does here polyphonically, but as less percussive elements. And that's where polyphonic decay comes in, which Melodyne correctly utilized as its detection algorithm. If audio, like in this piano performance, has a lot of staccato, a lot of percussive elements to it, it'll use polyphonic decay. Now you can set defaults here. I have it set to automatic, which is pretty much standard, but you can choose any one of these and make them your default opening one. Let's take a look at um, how Melodyne does what it does, okay? I'm going to pan the audio down a little bit. Let's zoom in. Now, keep in mind that the detection algorithm, although it correctly identified it as polyphonic decay in this example, isn't a fixed value. You can actually go in and still tweak that analyzing engine. I want to take a listen to the audio from here. I'm hearing a high note. Let's scrub in our timeline. You hear that high note? But I'm not seeing it. So what we're going to do now is if you come across something like this where Melodyne hasn't presented the audio, hasn't articulately presented it for you, separating, separating it from the complex waveform, simply come up to our note assignment mode right here. And we're presented with these parameters to literally configure the detection engine according to our source material. In this case, I can see the outline right here of a note. I'm going to double click it and Melodyne's going to assign the sonic energy to that one particular note. Now, what these blinds mean is that frequencies that aren't pertinent to our detection. Now, this note clearly was, but the others could be overtones or ghost notes or different kinds of audio um, that's relative to the performance, but not sonically. So keep that in mind too. And to go back to our editing, just simply select the edit mode. Now we've got that high note available not only to see and hear, but to edit. There it is. So remember, Melodyne's detection engine is not a fixed value. You can go in there and tweak it. And that's the difference between being a, a good editor, I feel, and a great editor, is knowing how to make the software work for you. So that's one way to conform Melodyne. But what about using this as a creative tool now? Well, let's do that too. I want to point out here that what we're looking at here is a complete interface. Up in the top left corner, we can toggle some of these viewing parameters on and off. For example, the info pane, I can toggle it on and off, giving us more viewing real estate for our work. And the same with the tracks pane up here at top. And the same with the info pane here I have open on the right side. See, just toggling it on and off. Now let's have a little bit of fun. We have six editing tools here. There are more, but these are the main tools. Select uh, main tool, pitch tool, format, amplitude, moving notes, timing, and those separations. Let's go to our pitch tool. And let's have a little bit of fun here. Now, Melodyne correctly also analyzes in the key of C major. 
Now, if we want to continue editing this in the key of C major, it's really simple. There's a disclosure arrow here under the treble clef. Selecting it, you want to make sure it's on scale snap. This will allow you to prevent from making accidentals when you're moving notes up and down on the pitch scale. Chromatic will just snap them chromatically relative to the tonal center around the tonal center they were recorded in. And no snap will just be like an elastic audio, like this, for example. Okay. I'm going to select this and leave it on scale snap. And you can toggle the grid on and off by selecting the treble clef. Now let's have some fun. Let's hear this again. And let's do something the artist didn't intend in the performance. Let's take some of these notes, this one and this one, and we add some inflection to the performance now. <laughs> so you can see how Melanine can be used not only to change a performance, but as a communication tool. You could say, hey, try, try playing it this way. And literally playing it for them is a great way to describe sometimes what it is you intend as a producer. Uh, I can take my amplitude tool, for example, and I can increase the volume. If I select any one of these notes or both of them like this, I'll edit them as a group. Here, I just increased this. If you look at the dialog box, 1.68 dBs here. Now, hopefully you're beginning to see the power and value in this program. And... Let's take it from bar six now. Let's say this chord here, we've got these three notes. One is a D, one is a B, and the other is a G flat. What if we didn't want to hear that chord. What if that was an accidental performance, something that the artist was just doing in the spur of the moment? Well, again, we can select these notes and I can, I can simply delete them by tapping delete on my keyboard. And now they're gone. If you don't want to delete them, but still keep them in view, I can choose my amplitude tool, double click them and mute them. And it'll sound like the chord was never played. This is polyphonic waveform detection, analyzing, and editing here in Melodyne 4. I just wanted to create this quick video so people can have an idea, a quick and easy idea of how powerful and flexible this technology is and what it's brought to the audio industry today. But of course, the best way is to just get started for yourself. Dive right in, understand the basic fundamentals of the tools, and have fun with your work. Thanks for watching.